Sage Wonder coming at you from my van down by the river. The sun has come out. Oh, we have sunshine in Oregon in December. I can't believe it. So you get to see my face in its natural hue. This is the natural color of my face. All right. <laughs> Enough with the silliness. Okay, so how much is artificial intelligence messing with our minds? Well, one of the things that I can tell you is that especially if you're on YouTube, you are a constant victim of artificial intelligence programming your thought processes and your choices and your ways of thinking and your opinions. Well, how is that so, Sage? How are they doing that? I'll give you an example. Now, I'm pretty sure this, how, this is how this works. You correct me if I'm wrong. But I believe that the ads, for instance, on uh, YouTube are engineered not towards uh, the channel, but towards the viewer. In other words, you're seeing the commercials that YouTube wants you to see, not the commercials that they think match my channel. I had a customer come on, uh, not a customer, but a, a viewer, uh, come on and comment, rather, that I should uh, get a new dang commercial instead of these uh, the, the egg test commercial from the mattress company that's online, a purple mattress. Well, I, I replied to them, dear, I think our, the artificial intelligence algorithms has determined that you have a bad back. And that is why they are giving you the same purple mattress commercial over and over and over again. Because it's time for you to buy a mattress and they know it. Kind of freaky, right? When I first started um, making these videos, you know, uh, I had a little smoker's cough. This little <coughs> and it's mostly gone now since I quit smoking. Woo! Like uh, 16 days, smoke-free, something like that. And um, starting to lose track of how many days. I'm over it. I ain't a smoker anymore. That's awesomeness for me. Yay. Okay, so enough partying and patting myself on the back. But when I first started making these videos... All the commercials started showing, it, when I would watch a video, uh, they would start showing uh, COPD medications. So we know that the information that is being collected on you is, and they tell you this, it's for the design and purpose of advertising directly to you. But is that all there is to these AI algorithms? Are they simply choosing products that you think you might need and matching their advertisement to go directly to the individuals who are mo most likely to use these products? Well, I mean, that's pretty cool. You know, that's what's wrong with that? What, what's wrong with that? Well, the depths they have to go to analyze you and to collect information on you to come up with those algorithms is the problem. The the actual violation of your of your privacy the intentional undulterated intrusion into analyzing and discovering you as a human being and using that information to create these algorithms i think there's something morally wrong with being that nosy i mean researching your customer base is one thing but looking under my bed is another you know, looking in my bathroom drawer. And this is essentially what they're doing by using all these means of collecting information. They're not hiding that they that they turn on their ca your cameras and microphones to listen to you. That when you get a personal assistant, that they are listening for everything, for keywords for you to say, that then can trigger uh, these algorithms to make adjustments in your profile. I was speaking with my son the other day, and, and we thought, wouldn't it be weird if every piece of media I've ever appeared in as a musician or as a personality, uh, I mean, because there's a lot of stuff. I've been on television a lot. I've been, uh, and it's lost to antiquity. You know, I was talking to my son about a television appearance that I thought was probably one of the best concerts in my life, but I don't know, you know, whether that footage exists in the world. But wouldn't it be something to know that it probably does and is attached to this master database file, this artificial intelligence file it may not even be an actual file it's it's a collection of information that companies like Procter and Gamble have acquired concerning you as a human being what do you like what are you into 
Um, I think I probably more than likely scared that lady to death when I told her, you know, that AI knows you have a bad back. Because she probably does. And that's why they keep shooting her with these commercials. Um, you know, like the COPD commercials for me. They knew it was a smoker, even though I never really smoked on screen. So, um, how bad is artificial intelligence messing with your mind and, and mine and ours? Well, we know that they're clearly trying to program what we purchase. You know, that seems innocent enough. But look at YouTube and how it uh, decides on your recommended viewing uh, videos that comes up. A lot of people don't go far beyond the recommended section. I know I spend a lot of time refreshing my recommended videos on YouTube when I watch them. And those also are using artificial intelligence databases to put together videos based on what you viewed, based on what you've uh, clicked on. <laughs> they'll look at that and then they'll send videos to you that are customized, tailorized. They want to the idea is to try to anticipate what you want and give you what you want. Sounds pretty cool, huh? You just get the videos you like and you don't have to look through all the videos that you hate. Well, that seems good, except when you start to realize then that you are simply watching the videos that that machine thinks you should be watching. What other real news and information are you missing out on because these recommended videos are telling you what to watch? You know, I never have agreed much with Barack Obama uh, since he got elected the first time. Everyone knows I did vote for him the first time because he, like the AI, told me what I wanted to hear. Uh, I wanted change. I guess we're getting change now. But um, at any rate, he recently was quoted uh, saying something I found quite interesting. That there are uh, more than one realities now. That because of this kind of... Uh, uh, the AI putting you into a box, you know, oh, this guy's a conservative, so he only gets the conservative news. Oh, this guy's a liberal, so they only get the most liberal news. Oh, never, don't show Alex Jones to that person, you know. Oh, well, you show that person Rachel Maddow, that's what they want to hear. You know, well, don't, don't show Rachel Maddow to this guy, he only wants to hear, you know, uh, Hannity. See, and it starts to customize and shape what it is that you see through these recommendations. And it does create a bubble. You know, that's what Barack Obama was saying, that a lot of people are living in two realities. I mean, half of America believes Trump is a criminal and should be rounded up and put in prison or shot. I mean, they're saying that, that, they should, that, that people think that you should, that people should kill the president because of this stuff that the left-wing media has said. And it's because they're not hearing the other side of the story. They're in these bubbles that are created through artificial intelligence, telling you what you want to hear, guiding you down the primrose path that it thinks it's right for you. One thing about being a disorganized mess in the media is that, you know, once upon a time you had to search a little harder to get a polarized view. And now a polarized view is being forced upon us. It's almost like the divide and conquer theory of the culture now is being programmed into artificial intelligence and technology uh, through your phone and through Facebook and the things that, uh, you know, it's narrowing your friendship group to just people that agree with you. And it's creating all these polarized groups, all of these smaller little tribes of various ideologies and it's banding them together and um, it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy artificial intelligence says you are this person and then they just feed you things until you are that person I don't know what to do about it I'm just making note of it how much is artificial intelligence messing with your mind is it telling you what to think is it pigeonholing you into one category or another being a guy that's kind of in the middle, being a guy that's kind of a centrist to some degree, I'm really not extreme one way or the other. I have always had a centrist view for the most part, although one side considers me extreme you know, on the other side because I don't agree with them. But in reality, I think if you took the blinders off, I'm pretty in the middle. And I feel, I feel the artificial intelligence trying to make me more this way or less that way. And I may want to hear what Jimmy Dory has to say, or Jimmy Dore has to say. You know, he's a left-wing uh, uh, person who the AI just took out of my feed. They just took it out of my feed because, you know, they figured I didn't want to watch it. I didn't watch it three times in a row. 
But I do like what Jimmy Dore has to say. He's a comedian out of California who's a progressive uh, left-wing liberal, but he also believes the Trump collusion illusion is just that, a bunch of BS. And he, he'll tell you straight up, it's a frame-up job. He doesn't trust the party either. So uh, at any rate, how much is AI messing with your mind? I don't know. God save the republic. God save our brains. All right, I'm out.